The one thing that's great about being a part of a wonderful city like London is that there is so much always going on. And these community wards that the London Library puts on are a great way of finding out about all of the things that are going on in here in the library. And tonight, I'm lucky enough to have seen a flyer for an exhibition that is talking about uh, wind power and how wind energy can be uh, brought into an urban environment. So I'm really excited about that. Our speaker for the evening was Professor Horia Hangen from the University of Western Ontario. He began by talking about how wind is represented in ways that we can understand. I thought that it was great that he talked about the world of art and its importance in all aspects of our lives. Then we got involved in understanding the science of this valuable resource. I quickly learned that the London's University has been involved in understanding wind and its many properties since the early 60s, being a consultant for such Canadian icons as the CN Tower. Professor Hangen was very excited to share that with the cooperation of many investors that the university is now finishing construction of the world's first 3D wind chamber. I also think that this is fantastic news as London will shine as a world leader in this field for many generations to come. This project is aptly named Windy, which stands for Wind, Engineering, Energy, and Environment. My three most favorite E-words. $23 million was invested in this project, creating many local jobs in both the labor force and the building material industries, and I'm very excited to see how this investment will also contribute to many other London businesses as our global science community comes knocking on our door. I was extremely interested when Professor Hangan told us that for many decades the university's first wind tunnel was used to help design buildings to be able to withstand the forces of the wind. And now their thinking has evolved so that buildings are now being designed to be able to use these same wind forces as a way to create energy so that the structures can be self-sufficient. The professor continued to explain how wind energy could never be a solitary solution to solving the world's energy crisis, but it will be a part of it. As well as wind energy, our cities will also need to develop better solar technologies as well as geothermal installations. And this makes perfect sense. Now I think London and Londoners should be preparing for changes of this nature. Changes that not only will improve our economies and our environment, but also our standards of living. Now I know that many of you are thinking about these kind of wind turbines when I talk about wind energy, but I assure you that I am not. I've never been a fan of these wind farms. As an artist, I am horrified by how our landscapes are being destroyed, and I've heard way too many issues of concern to think that these technologies are a safe solution. The turbines that I'm talking about are called vertical axis wind turbines, or VAWT for short. Many people refer to them as egg beaters. Several ingenious urban designs have already proven the value of this technology over the last few years. In Chicago, a parking garage, known as the Greenway, was built with several goals in mind. One was to create enough energy to power the lighting system. By harnessing natural energy flows, they were also able to save several hundred thousand dollars on air handlers and ductwork, while also saving on their monthly utility bills as their lighting features shut off automatically with the presence of ambient daylight. 
This garage is also equipped with a two-way power meter allowing any excess energy to be directed into Chicago's power grid, saving even more money. As I read the many articles that have been written about this 11th story garage, I began to think of another parking garage that is still under construction at the Victoria Hospital on Commissioners Avenue, and I realized that we had missed out on a great opportunity to be an inspiration for ourselves as well as other surrounding communities. Not only do I see Londoners learning about and using this technology, but I think that London has the capability of becoming a world leader in the manufacturing of these kind of products. By creating local manufacturing industries, we will also be creating new employment opportunities, not only for the people of London, but also our neighboring communities. Now I think if London is going to live up to its motto as the city of opportunity, the time to act is now. Not tomorrow, but today.